This video will demonstrate the packing replacement process for a Blackmer LB601 compressor and is typical of many Blackmer reciprocating gas compressors. To complete this process, you will need a 3 quarter inch wrench, a soft faced hammer, and a 3 inch adjustable spanner wrench. First, place the spanner wrench into the holes on the piston lock nut and tap the spanner wrench counterclockwise with the hammer a few times to loosen the lock nut. Note, if the lock nut seems overly tight, it may be necessary to use a second spanner wrench to hold the piston while loosening the piston lock nut. Use the spanner wrench to remove the piston lock nut. In some instances, the piston will unscrew with the lock nut. This is okay, but never attempt to unscrew the piston without first removing the piston lock nut. Next, attach the spanner wrench to the piston. Use the hammer to tap the spanner wrench counterclockwise and loosen the piston and then remove the piston assembly. Use the same procedure to remove the second piston. Be careful to prevent dirt or debris from falling into the cylinder bores. This can be done by performing the procedure in a clean environment. Loosen the eight cylinder bolts with a three quarter inch wrench. Remove the cylinder bolts. Next, remove the cylinder. In the shop, you can use a hoist as shown here. Place two eye bolts into the middle two holes on the top of the cylinder to assist with lifting the cylinder. If you are in the field where you don't have access to a hoist, the cylinder can be lifted by two people. With the cylinder removed, you see that atop each crosshead piston rod assembly is a thrust washer with one or more shims on top of it. This thrust washer and shims set the clearance for the piston head. When you remove them from the crosshead piston rod assembly, be sure to label them and keep them separated until reinstallation. If the same shims are not returned to the proper piston rod during reassembly, the piston head clearance may be off. Note, the thrust washer and shims can also be removed prior to removing the cylinder head. This is done by simply reaching into the cylinder and pulling them off the crosshead piston rod. At the bottom of the crosshead rods, you can see the packing box hold down ring and the packing box. Place the spanner wrench in the holes of the hold down ring. Use the hammer to tap the spanner wrench counterclockwise and loosen the hold down ring, and then use the wrench to remove the ring entirely. The packing box can now be removed. Rotate the flywheel so that the crosshead piston rod lifts the packing box out of the piston as seen here. Remove the packing box and repeat the process for the other packing box. Note, if the packing box does not lift by rotating the flywheel, simply grasp the packing box with your hand and use a twisting motion from left to right while pulling up on the packing box. After removing the packing boxes, use your finger to remove the O-ring that sits underneath the packing box. On double-packed versions, LB602 and HD602, a second O-ring will be at the bottom of the packing box. This O-ring typically will not come out with the packing box and must be removed with an O-ring pick or narrow slot screwdriver. Now it's time to replace the packing inside the packing box. The top end kit or intermediate rebuild kit contains replacement parts for both packing boxes of the LB601 compressor. The packing set includes two washers, two springs, and two sets of V-ring packing. You will typically need to reuse some of the packing box washers and any retainer rings that you remove. A packing installation tool is sold separately and is also highly recommended to assist with reinstallation of the packing box. In addition to the rebuild kit, you will also need a set of internal snap ring pliers. Use the snap ring pliers to remove the snap ring from the top of the packing box. Place the ends of the pliers in the holes of the snap ring. Squeeze the snap ring while pushing down on the top of the packing washer to remove and release the snap ring from its groove, and lift the ring out of the packing box. Next, remove the washer, the spring, the second washer, the V packing, and the bottom washer. Turn the packing box upside down and use the snap ring pliers to remove the bottom retainer ring from the packing box. Discard the used springs and V-packing rings. 
Remember, it will be necessary to reuse any of the washers and retainer rings that are not included with the packing sets or in the repair kit. Then, use a clean shop towel to wipe down the inside of the packing box. If you notice any vertical score marks on the packing box, you may need to replace it before replacing the packing. Next, ready your components for replacement. For each packing box, you will need two retainer rings, one set of V-ring packing, one spring, and three washers. It is also very important that you make sure your hands are very clean before starting a new packing installation. You don't want anything that might be abrasive to get into the packing rings or packing box. We'll begin by installing the bottom retainer ring. Turn the packing box upside down and use the snap ring pliers to compress the retainer ring and install the retainer ring into the groove in the packing box. Be sure that the spring clip is properly seated. Note, on some smaller models, it is necessary to install a packing washer before installing the bottom retainer ring. Now flip the packing box over. Place one washer inside the packing box on top of the bottom retaining ring. Next, install the V-packing. The V-packing consists of six parts. The female V-ring has a flat bottom and a concave V-shape in the top. This female V-ring goes on the bottom, flat side down. On top of the female ring, we place the four identical V-shaped ceiling rings. They have a protruding V-shaped bottom and a concave V-shaped top. On top of the V-packing assembly sits the male V-ring. This ring has a protruding V-shaped bottom and a flat top. Now install all pieces of the V-packing as one assembly with the female V-ring on the bottom and the male V-ring on the top. Press it down inside the packing box until it rests on top of the washer. Install the second washer on top of the V-packing. Next, install the spring on top of the second washer and place the last washer on top of the spring. Finally, use the snap ring pliers to install the second retainer ring. Compress the retainer ring with the pliers and slide it into the groove at the top of the packing box, making sure that it is seated properly. It will be necessary to push down the washer and spring with your thumb and snap ring pliers as you are installing the retainer ring. You can also use the handle end of a small screwdriver to assist with compressing the packing spring and washer if necessary. If you cannot get the retainer ring seated properly into the groove, as shown here, you can place an appropriate sized socket or screwdriver handle against the top packing box washer and compress the packing spring enough to allow the retainer ring to seat in the retainer ring groove. Place a one and one quarter inch socket inside the packing box and gently tap the socket to push the spring ring down into the groove. This concludes the packing replacement. To begin the packing box installation, first place a new O-ring from the repair kit gasket set onto the landing in the crosshead guide. The packing box will seal against this O-ring when the packing box is put in place. Then take your packing box installation tool and place it over the threads on the crosshead piston rod. This will prevent the threads from tearing or scratching the packing during installation. Lightly lubricate the crosshead rod and packing box installation tool. Then install the packing box on the crosshead rod and slide it down the piston rod until it firmly seats on top of the packing box O-ring. Place the packing box hold down ring over the crosshead piston rod and down over the packing box. Use the spanner wrench to tighten the hold down ring, tapping gently with the hammer to secure it into place. Remove the packing box installation tool. Finally, check to assure that the packing box is installed correctly. Rotate the flywheel back and forth, watching the packing box for any movement. If the packing box is correctly seated, it will not move. If you see any movement in the packing box when manipulating the flywheel, as shown here, it is improperly seated. Remove the hold down ring and packing box and reinstall. You are now ready to reinstall the cylinder head in the reverse order as described earlier. This concludes the packing replacement process for a Blackmer LB601 reciprocating gas compressor.